The data was in focus as it was the first GDP print to factor in the impact of demonetization. And surprising many, it didn't show any significant impact of the note ban on India's growth rate. In fact, the CSO left the GDP estimate for FY17 unchanged at 7.1%. Not only that, for the October to December quarter, GDP came in at 7%. That's slightly higher compared to the same quarter last year and significantly higher than what a CNBC TV 18 poll had projected. My colleague Lata caught up with the chief statistician of India, TC Ananth, to ask him about the explanation behind those numbers. Here's that conversation. The GDP numbers yesterday certainly surprised uh, uh, economists uh, by not being as bad as uh, the forecasts uh, had indicated, the uh, polls had indicated. Uh, to answer a wide range of questions, I have with me the, the chief statistician of India, the head of the uh, uh, CSO, Dr. T.C. Anand. Uh, Professor Anand, thank you very much for joining us today. Well, let me start exactly yeah, with that. Uh, the uh, fact that some of the numbers were puzzling because uh, uh, anecdotal data or micro indicators were indicating more slowdown. See, the specific consumption uh, uh, part of the data is in that trade hotels uh, 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 segment. Now, we had evidence that retail trade and wholesale trade were indicating that demand was very poor. How come, you know, the, uh, your trade uh, uh, and hotels indicated a 7.3% growth, sir? Uh, well, you know, there are details given in the press note and you can take a look at them. But I can refer to one of the indicators which is used when we compute this segment, which is sales tax collections. Mm. And as you are aware, sales tax is in fact collected on the basis of goods sold. Mm. And we, in, from that, assess a volume of indicator for trade. And that suggested that whatever estimates you are giving, that's one of the factors behind it. Mm. So. I, you know, the, we, one of the things which one must keep in mind, anecdotal evidence is not the same as uh, estimates derived from uh, indicators which are aggregated over a large number of sources. Mm. So, well, whatever it is. Mm. Okay. No, I mean, I just want to know, was there any specific part since, uh, you know, we had hard numbers on trade, uh, freight rates fell because goods were not moving. And therefore, was there any element in that which did better, uh, uh, you know, uh, which made up for you, something you know, else? It, it's, no, no, I, 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 look, they, they build it up from components, but I don't have the access to okay. the detailed component wise okay. calculation in front of me, so I can't give you an answer okay. on that. Okay. But as I told you, mm. uh, you know, the, the one indicator which does feed into that calculation is also available to you, mm. and you can see that it is significantly correlated with trade volumes. Okay. All right. Let me look at another thing which puzzled me, sir. Your overall full year GVA, gross value added is 6.7%. Mm -hmm. And as of now, you mm -hmm. have the uh, quarterly breakup of uh, 6.7, 6.8, and in this quarter, 6.7. Now, if I subtract, mm -hmm. then uh, the current quarter, fourth quarter GVA should come at 6.5. If you just do the math. Now, what is puzzling is if you looked at the micro data, for instance, two wheeler sales. Two wheeler sales were terrible in November and even worse in uh, December. They've improved uh, rather dramatically in the January and February numbers. But the, your GVA numbers are so sedate 6.6 uh, .6 in the third quarter and by uh, subtraction, 6.5 in the fourth quarter. Yours is very ironed out. The, uh, uh, anecdotal data is very uh, volatile. Oh, let, again, you know, let's not build from scooters to the overall, but let's try to, you know, the manner in which we do the exercise, we first make the annual estimate in all of these. In fact, there, because our indicator set for quarterly tends to be fairly limited. Mm. So what we do is we compile the annual, and then the annual is allocated to the quarters using uh, the indicators which are available on higher frequency for quarterly calculations. Mm. So for that, we also need to make an assessment of what the full year movement, for example, IIP. Mm. We have about now nine months data for IIP. Mm. So we make a projection of the nine months on to 12 months. Mm. And then using that rule of projection, allocate 
the three uh, quarterly IIP to uh, to get a sense of what the full year breakdown is. Mm. Now, this is admittedly the quarterly assessment is therefore a little coarser and we have pointed this out earlier also when we had discussions on quarterly estimates and discrepancies in quarterly estimates and I pointed out if you remember last year we had discussion and you were saying why is the discrepancy in quarterly so high mm. I said quarterly is a much coarser mm. allocation okay. we don't have that degree of granularity in quarterly allocations mm. the annual is tends to be a little more robust partly because of the law of large numbers as well no, is it? I mean, you have a uh, you have such an intimate uh, understanding of the numbers. Is it possible that the fourth quarter will be lower than your estimates? Look, at, at this point of time, the fourth quarter is still unfulfilling. Yes. And it, yeah, but uh, two thirds has already unfolded, the, the, sir. Two thirds has already unfolded. Uh, well, we don't even have the IIP figure for the month of February as yet. I mean, you know, two-thirds have certainly unfolded, but I have to go again by estimates. Mm. And at the moment, uh, in, in, another, in another month's time, or uh, another 10 days' time, you will get the IIP figure for January. Mm. Now, my point is, the fourth quarter will be built up from all these numbers. Mm. So, what, in terms of the realm of speculation, people are of course free to speculate in every possible way they like. Mm. But at the moment, all that we have is the figures we have and okay. from that we made the best possible assessment. Okay. Well, I, I'll tell you another thing that puzzled uh, me. Uh, your revision of the previous quarter. Now look at the quarterly breakup mm -hmm. of FY16. Q1 7.8, mm -hmm. Q2 8.4, Q3 7. And Q4 again 8.4. So, I mean, it looks like that Q3 okay. very conveniently has gone down to make the current Q3 look good. I mean, how, how is it that you have 8.4 in the second quarter uh, uh, last year, 8.4 in the fourth quarter, but suddenly a depression of 7% in the third quarter? Uh, 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 let, let me, uh, again, you know, the allocation of last year's number to quarters is based on essentially a number of indicators some of which have remained the same particularly iip and so on but some have been revised based on the actual output and i'll give you one example agriculture mm. if you look at the detailed data between comparing last year and this year you will find that the agricultural estimate for third quarter has changed mm. now why did that happen because look what has happened is agriculture actually comes on a crop calendar where the output doesn't come in quarterly terms mm. the Full year output is allocated in quarterly terms by the agriculture ministry according to a certain harvesting and cropping calendar. Okay. Now the final estimates of agriculture, remember a good chunk of the third quarter and fourth quarter estimates, what feeds into third fourth quarter estimates were finalized only after our last year's estimates were closed. At the time when we made the PE, mm. we were still working with third estimates of agriculture. So. These updated figures were incorporated in our RE, which was released in January. Mm. And b once they had been incorporated, it worked out like this. Now, I I you can turn around and say, this is what happened in agriculture. In other segments, look at it segment-wise, you will get a story okay. emerging of what happened in the third quarter. Fair enough. Okay, um, uh, Dr. Anant, uh, you know, I, I just wanted you to uh, explain to us how you count. What is the percentage of informal sector? Is it that informal sector is what, 45%, 48% out of the GDP? Yeah, informal sector, what uh, in, G, in the parlance which is used in na national accounting term is the uh, household segment mm. is I think about 40 to 45 percent. I, I, okay. I'll have to check what it is. Okay, yes, no, no, no I, I'm asking you that 40 to 45 percent, uh, uh, assuming that number, sir. You know, uh, the chief economic advisor was uh, uh, explaining after the economic survey that you all have the value added uh, formula, the input output formula for the formal sector and you extrapolate it for the informal sector. Is it not possible that in the quarter uh, gone by, the informal sector could not have been as good as the formal sector because it was more cash dependent? So are the final figures well, likely to look lower? Well, let, let, you know, one of the things about the uh, informal sector is uh, 
there is no direct data available to anybody, mm -hmm. not to us, not to you, not to anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you can assess this in one of two ways. You can do anecdotes, which is one approach to it. Uh, but let me give you the approach which is followed in CUSO and argue that it is a little more robust. A, I will break up the informal sector into four components. The largest component, when one of the largest components is in agriculture, mm. which is pretty much all informal. Yes. In agriculture, we assess GVA by a com combination of data on uh, output, which is generated from data on acreage and yield, for which there are well-established regular survey procedures, which everybody is aware of. Mm. And those are then conflated with value-added data, which comes from the cost of cultivation survey to give us agriculture value-added. Now, this is about the most precise you can get for agriculture for anybody. Mm -hmm. So that's a chunk of the informal sector. The second chunk of the informal sector is in trade. Mm. Now, in trade, we take an indirect assessment of the informal sector by generating a volume measure mm. of the non-corporate sales tax collection, that is sales yeah. tax collection emanating from non-corporate sources, mm. generate a volume measure from that and get it. Again, it's an indicator of what the volume of trade in the informal sector is. Mm. It is an indirect measure, but these people are paying sales tax by the fact that their goods are tax paid. Mm. The third area where informal sector activity is significantly large is in construction. In construction, we use an indirect measure of assessing informal sector activity by the offtake of consumption or, or consumption of steel and cement, which again is available to us, but it's an indicator of volume. Now, the only place where we apply formal sector value added to assess informal sector activity is in the realm of uh, manufacturing where we take the IIP for the two-digit categories which overlap with the informal sector, admittedly those are in the formal segment, okay. and apply those two-digit categories growth to the informal sector. Mm -hmm. But in the manner in which I have described to you, mm -hmm. please notice we have accounted for about 70 to 75 percent of the informal sector by means other than formal sector activity. So what the short point is that when the final numbers come, uh, uh, it need not necessarily be that uh, the uh, Q3 number is going to be revised lower? I, I, it need not necessarily be. That is correct. But let me explain what are the major sources of data which we are missing. And that is something which everybody may want to keep in mind. And it's a very important data which will be coming in next year. Okay. At the moment, our data is based on the advanced filing information of companies, listed companies. And as many people agree, these are the larger companies which do advanced estimates. Yeah. Uh, we will get a much fuller corporate estimate when the larger set of companies prepare and finalize their accounts after the close of the financial year mm. and file these accounts with the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. This will take place in periods starting after September 30th usually, which is the last date for this purpose. Okay. Now, that will give us information about the corporate segment, which is smaller than the listed companies and the large companies. How does that picture pan out? We will only get to see when that number comes out. It mm. is anybody's call which way that can go. Mm. It is a big difference. In the past, for example, when we did the revision yeah. in 15-16, that led to a significant upward revision. It can happen. Okay. So let's see how it comes So out. that revision happened because of the formal sector or informal sector? Your high... Uh... Well, it depends upon what you... Uh, you see, these are MSMEs. They are corporates, they are essentially the, if you like, the middle segment of the corporate economy, which okay. is very large. These are, uh, and, but they are formal because they maintain accounts. They are not your ready patri wala, okay. but they are, uh, you know, so, uh, want to call them formal. I think the correct word is they are formal, they are organized, they are registered as companies, but they are smaller companies. Okay. Well, finally, sir, when are we getting the back series, sir? Uh, uh, you know, we only have from 2011 onwards. Uh, we wanted to know from today's standards what was that 9% GDP of 2008 likely to be in the uh, in the new series. Look, I, I, I'll tell you one thing. I, I, I appreciate the econometrician's demand for a back series because he wants consistent time series. Mm. Uh, the challenge for us is because some of the data sources which we have used, in particular the MC. corporate database because we are now using five lakh companies yeah. we are finding that the challenge of extrapolating from the visible set mm. which is the few large companies onto the 
5 lakh companies is proving to be quite difficult and there are anomalies which keep cropping up in analysis. Uh, we are trying to see what we can do best. But the point is, you know, the if you wish, and you can certainly do that, mm. the data sources and methodology of the old series is available. But please understand, the back series does not merely about using MCA data versus using the RBI sample. You're more than welcome to compare the RBI sample to the MCA data and you will see which way the growth goes. No, no, we, I, only want to know, fact that new I only want to know how no, worse no. we are compared to the 2003-2008 period. I, I, I think uh, uh, I, I think the answer of worse or better is a much more complicated thing. Okay. And my advice to all of you, and particularly financial analysts, you know, in your rush to, if you like, decry a set of numbers, don't look for things which may not be found elsewhere. No, no, the, no not decry at all. No, not decry at all, Professor Anand. It is only to understand the <laughs> economy's trajectory. Have we genuinely slowed? Have we not slowed? I will, I, I, let, let me put it this way. The economic tragedy, you have three years of overlapping data available. The relationship between the old series and the new series are available to you in the three years data. The, what will be clear to you is that the directional movement is more or less the same. Okay. Now, if the directional movement is the same, mm. this uh, estimate which we have got will certainly bear out whatever characteristics you have seen okay. in the third quarter. Okay. Uh, people would like to state numbers according to preferences, mm. but my suggestion is rather than trying to make the numbers fit your preferences, it may be better to make the analysis fit the numbers. Okay, okay. okay sir, finally, if you are a betting man, oh, well, last year's 7.6 became 7.9. This quarter, 6.6 .6 will become what, sir? Will it become 6 or will it become 7? <laughs> Uh, I, I have now, you know, uh, 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 if you had asked me this last year, it would have been very interesting because I remember reading one academic paper where a person convincingly argued that we invariably revise downwards every year to make the growth of the current year look better. <laughs> and this was based on an <laughs> exercise that of is, analysis of That is true years. of the third what? quarter, sir. <laughs> Fortunately <laughs> for me, the, the third year turned out to be different. Yeah, so let's say that we have a, a, a chance which it could go either way. Okay. No, but what's your sense? Since you know the numbers like no one else, uh, are there a, is no, there a chance? I, 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 I unfortunately don't uh, talk about forecasting, so I will wait for the numbers to come out. I'm not going to speculate on what they are. Okay. I simply don't have a long enough time series to speculate. Fair enough, sir. Uh, appreciate your time with us. Thank you very much, Professor Anand, for joining us. Yeah.